everyone, Kathy Zilski here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and the craft slash dining room. Today I've got something a little different for you. Now you know I'm not fancy, right? I don't front. By definition of front, apparently I do not. I mean, Old Navy, Target. So what I'm going to share today is a little fancy because it's all about home manicures. And specifically, bonjour. French manicure. Some people might think French manicures are a little tacky, but I think they make me look expensive. I'm not trying to pull a Fonzie here and jump the shark because this is a scrapbooking and card making YouTube channel, but I do have some great tips for how to do this magic at home. My at home easy French manicure is coming up next. Ooh, <laughs> très bien, madame. I like to start my manicures with my already painted nails about five days into the mani. Now you can see the chips there, right? This is where I like to start so that I can see the actual shape of my nail. Next, we need tools. Most of my tools today are coming from Olive and June. I love this company. This company empowers people to paint their nails at home and I love their supplies. The only thing I don't have right now is the little Olive and June pot, so I have some acetone. It'll work great. For my polishes, I'm using Olive and June HD. CCT is the sheer pink and their wonderful top coat. Olive and June likes to tell people that 90% of your nail shape I think it's 90% should come from clipping. So this is what I do. I take a look at my nails with the polish on. Why is it easier? Well, because when my polish is off, my the whites of my nails don't match, like nothing really, <laughs> they're kind of a mess. But when I have polish on, it's much easier to see my nail shape and to go ahead and start cutting to shorten them. And once I get the length to something that I like, then I'm ready to file. I like the more squoval look. It just looks good on my hand. And so the flat edge clippers work great for getting that length down. And then I will bring in my nail file to smooth the edges. Now I try to go in one direction, right? I've heard that you're not supposed to go back and forth because it shreds the nails. Yeah, most of the time I go in one direction, but this is what I do to smooth out those edges and to get that nice squoval shape that I am so fond of. It's pretty easy. Just again, having the polish on helps me to see that shape so much more easily. And now they are ready for removal of polish. I'm going to use my Zoya polish remover and this stuff is great. It's just got this little pump and I'll saturate my cotton balls and take off the polish. Olive and June does make a wonderful pot remover. I just don't have any right now. The thing that's so great about that little pot remover is if you have all your nails done and let's say you mess up one right at the end, it's so great to be able to just remove polish from one nail and not mess up the rest of your manicure. So I do love the pots. Mine is just dry. All right, clean nails. And I did notice my ring finger a little too long. So clipping that down, smoothing it back out with the file. And next we're ready to work on my cuticles. Now I have learned this from Olive and June. Don't cut them. If you can avoid it, don't cut them. Instead, take a little buffer, go right to the edge where you will see any skin that has built up and gently buff. This has kind of been a little bit game changing for me because I used to get in there with my cuticle nippers, right? And just start cutting and nine out of 10 times I would end up bleeding and let's just say it wasn't a pretty sight. But I've gone to the buff method and I really only pull out the nippers when you know, there's like a hangnail. I don't clip at my cuticles anymore. And after I've done that, I hit it again with polish remover, either my Zoya, or if I had the Olive and June pot, I would dip in the pot to get all the dust off and to completely prep my nail for painting. This dehydrates the nail and it makes your polish last longer. Don't go to the sink. Don't get water on your nail plates because that makes your nail plate expand and that will actually shorten the life of your manicure. I have, I have learned this and I embrace this. So a little hangnail trim here and there, not gonna hurt anyone. Well, unless you, you know, cut, take skin off, but again, a little bit more filing where things look a little janky. But again, if you file, don't forget to get that polish remover. Again, remove all of the mucky muck so that your nail beds 
are clean, dry, dehydrated, and ready for the polish. Now here's a little tip I picked up along the way. When you open your polish bottle, get a little remover on some like paper towel or whatever. Just clean up that bottle because when you do, it's less likely to come out goopy. So I do this every time I start with a new manicure. You're gonna take just a little bit of that white out and begin. I had a little too much on there. You don't want too much and you get a feel for it after a while, but here is the beautiful thing. You don't have to lay it down perfectly to start. In fact, the messier you go on, probably fine, because it's all about coming in afterwards with a cleanup brush that makes this possible. I have tried French manicures at home many different ways. I even bought like some of those uh, like crescent moon shaped mani guards to try it. I've used um, a corner rounder and purple tape where I made my own little shaped things to put on my... All of those things were just frustration in action. But this technique I actually picked up when I was at a salon in my best friend's town, which is actually where I grew up, Everett, Washington. And I had really short nails and my bestie said, hey, why don't you get a French manicure? And I'm like, they're, they're too short. And she goes, no, they're not. Here, go get them. So I did, and I watched how the manicurist did it. It was just like this. And I thought, I think I can do this at home. So you put on your first layer of white, and it's a hot mess, right? Just a hot mess. Look at that. Looks terrible. That's okay, because what you do is you start the cleanup. Now, some people are going to do this after the second coat. I have found for me, I kind of like to know where I'm going, and so I clean up between each coat. I take my little brush, I dipped it you know, into the acetone, get it nice and saturated, and then you just start painting it off. Makes sense, right? Now it's gonna be a little easier for if you are right-handed and you're cleaning up your left hand, but you are gonna get better at it. Just like you get better at painting your non-dominant hand, this actually gets easier over time. I like to remove the polish that's on my skin first, and I keep going back to the acetone dipping in my brush, bringing it out fresh, and then proceeding with just remove it. And that's why you can go on really thick with it or, you know, really thick or down the nail bit plate quite a bit because it's going to be all about the cleanup. And it's actually kind of relaxing. You know how some people say things like Copic coloring is relaxing? I don't find that sort of thing relaxing and crafting, but this process I actually kind of enjoy. You know, I have my laptop off in the distance and I'll, I'll put on a movie. Let's say I'll put on Twilight. Why? Because I don't have to pay any attention to it because I've seen it 400 times. Yes, I'm a middle-aged vampire fan. But like, I'll just have something on in the background and I'll just kind of work my way around the nail, clean it up, get it shaped. You see how this works, right? That brush is fantastic. Just a great tool for general manicure cleanup, but it works really well for this as well. And this is the process. If you like that white to be a little thicker, you leave it thicker. If you like it thinner, you keep going up until you get it looking exactly how you want it. That is really the key to this process. And again, I do my first coat, get it where I want it to be, clean it all up, and then once that's done, I'm going to start on the second coat. Jumped ahead here, and there's my other hand. So you can see the difference between the two, right? I'm gonna repeat the cleanup process on my other hand, and through the magic of speeding ahead to the next clip, I then have the base started, just like that. So it looks pretty good. It's going to look better after this. Once the second layer of white is added, and the same process, that is what the tips look like. Next, it's time to add the sheer pink. CCT is the coolest color because it is so sheer. It's, you know that color ballet slippers? Remember when everybody and their brother used to put ballet slippers on their nails? It reminds me of ballet slippers, but it's somehow a more even color, and yet it is so sheer. And what I like to do is paint it over the whole nail, even the white, because what it will do is it kind of dials the white down just a bit. I do like that bright white, 
but this kind of just tones it down a little bit without really turning it pink. So one swipe of the CCT over each nail plate is how you finish the base of the French manicure. Isn't that great? All right, both are done. And once those are done, and I do let things dry probably about 10 minutes in between, I take the top coat. Now the Olive and June top coat is a fantastic top coat. It is formulated to work with their polishes and it dries really hard, like it creates this beautiful seal. And so I go pretty generously with the top coat and I try to cap my nail as, as much as I can. My nails are really short and the thing that I love about the French manicure is my cuticles aren't that great looking. And the thing that this does, I think, is it draws attention away from subpar cuticles. I mean, some of us are born with them. Some of us, not so much. And so that is one of the things that I love. It's kind of like smoke and mirrors. You see that, you're looking at those tips. It's so pretty and no one notices that my cuticles, well, they look like hell. But that's the basic steps of how I do my French manicures at home. Again, I'm going to have all the supplies that I use linked below this video if you want to check them out. I really do love that CCT and that HD. They just make a beautiful combo for a very natural, fresh French manicure. Anyway, I hope this inspires you to try Le French Manicure. My apologies to the great nation of France. Je suis désolé. Take your time, go slow, you know, the cleanup brush. If I can do a manicure à la française, à la française, anyone can. All links below the video. Not fancy. Not fancy. Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so that you don't miss the next time I post. Here are a couple other videos that you might be interested in watching. Thanks so much and have a great day.